which is our envelope. So this is going to, um, oh, and I should show you, I'm putting my bags of frosting into a wet paper towel so that they can keep the tip from getting dried out and plugging up the bag. And then every time you go to use it, you can just pull it out and wipe of scrape the tip of the bag onto the wet paper towels and that's kind of a little tip to keep your your bags of frosting from getting dry dried out and chunks of frosting going everywhere which doesn't look pretty okay for our envelope um, there's already lines that are created we're going to follow those lines and we're going to let each section set up in between um, as we go on to another section. So I'm going to actually do opposite sections first and then um, do the alternate opposites and then we will um, allow a little bit of setup to happen before we pipe in um, a red heart here. And I'm planning to do these three sections white and this section I'd like it to be a different color for that top flap of the envelope. So I'm thinking that I'll do one of the shades of pink for the top and um, maybe give it some polka dots as well. And then we'll come back after we're done doing each of these sections to put the heart in and then we'll let it set up a little bit and put some top lines over it that'll kind of make it get it finished off a little bit more there. Okay, so uh, we're going to use our white that is our flooding white so it's not the one with the red stripes on it it's just um, a flood consistency it's a little bit thinner than the bag that we pulled out earlier and we're gonna open the bag this one's got a lot of pressure on it so it's kind of dripping already but it looks like a good yeah it's a good um width for the bag to be opened up at. Okay. It's still going, it's going so fast. Okay, so I'm gonna get started up here first. And I'm just following the outline that's already created. I'm anchoring my frosting lifting up a line to create a nice straight line and then anchoring it back down when I'm done. Um, if you wiggle the outside of the line like I did, you just push it back. It fixes itself pretty easily. And then my frosting bag is getting messy again, so I'm just gonna give that a wipe off. And then I'll go to flood. this section again staying close to the cookie so I don't create a bunch of air pockets underneath my frosting and then once I have it filled I'm going to shake it before we go on to the next section we want to see that that section is leveled out, cleaned up, we'll pop the air bubbles. If there's any little gaps that were created, you can just make sure the gaps look, look good. Um, everything looks pretty good to me here. Just gonna kind of create a little bit of a harder outline there. And clean up just a touch. Smaller sections are easier to do, so it didn't quite get as messy as the bigger hearts did. Um, if you have some dried frosting on the outside of your bag like this, it'll drip into your cookie, so do wipe it away if that does happen. If you keep the bag clean, um, it won't drop off any crusted icing 
onto your cookie, which after doing all the pretty work that you're doing, you don't want to have that happen. Okay, I'm ready to do the alternate side now. So again, I'm going to create an anchor point lift as I'm applying pressure in the bag and then get to the end and anchor it down again. Lift up to make my straight line, anchor it down again. And then I'm going to anchor, apply pressure, still lifting up till I get to my next spot where I anchor. And then anchor again, lift up. Follow the line I want to follow and anchor again. So I'm going to just clean up a little bit. These might not even show depending on how much my red heart gets in there. They may just end up getting covered up, which is fine. Okay, and now that I'm done with that, I'll start to flood it. So I'm squeezing with my right hand and my left hand is just guiding the bag, steadying it, not really doing any of the pressure work, just kind of moving it. And then I go back and I fill in those gaps, just moving it with my, I find it easiest with my frosting tube. And then I pop bubbles sometimes with it too or I use my skewer to do that. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I'm just gonna shake it out carefully. Tap it down and shake it. And then once I have what I'm looking for, I go back to look for the bubbles. And it looks pretty good. There's a couple under the surface there, but they're kind of deep. I don't know that I can really get them out very much, but I'll try so we don't have that cratering. And sometimes if you just swirl your stick in, if you see that there's a bubble there that you've got to pop, just swirl your stick in there and then tap it back down. And a lot of times it'll take care of it. And then I'm just going to clean up a little bit around the heart here to make it a little bit more crisp. Um, the other side kind of started shaking out a little too. If you overfill your sections, it'll get runny and it'll run off the sides and out of the, your section. So you do want to be careful to um, not make your flooding way too high or the chances are that you'll just run off the cookie or run off of your lines that you want to keep in there. But if you underfill the cookie, you tend to get it looking like this, like I did on this side. I don't know if it's very visible, but you can see a slight depression in the frosting here. It just doesn't look as pretty. I mean, it's not the worst thing that could happen. And a lot of our lines will hide that when we're done with, um, with flooding it and letting it set up a little bit. But um, if you can avoid that little sinking look, uh, it looks much nicer when it's puffy and kind of full like this one is. So I am going to give that just a second here and then we're going to start outlining the opposite sides. Um, this one, I'm gonna do a pink and I think I think I wanna do this pink for the top here. You can choose if you want it to stay white or if you want it to be a different color. 
as well, but I just think it'll look fun and kind of offsets the envelope a little bit. Um, once I'm ready to go with it, I'm going to start my anchor point. Cut kind of funny, so I'm going to give it another trim. I don't like how the frosting's coming out, and then I'm going to probably just change the orientation of the way I'm holding my bag. So I was holding it with the seam side up, so we'll see how it falls this time. Sometimes your frosting will fall kind of funny and you have to just change your bag direction or snip a little bit differently to open the bag a little differently and then it falls nice but it, it looks like I've got it kind of fixed it's not wiggling around too much right now I'm gonna just pull that off because I didn't like what was happening there and we'll just start over on it which is fine to do. And that's why we have our little correcting tools, the bamboo skewers, or and this is my regular tool I use, metal one, but the bamboo skewer is intended to do just that as well. Okay, so now that I have it taken care of, I can start over again on that one. Get my anchor point lift. Get a good line going. Anchor. Every time it makes sense to anchor you just go ahead and anchor um, and if your line breaks you can make an anchor as well and then lift up and start it over again and if your lines kind of look wiggly or a little funny you just kind of push them back give them a little bit of help to do what you want them to do or if they're a little stiff and kind of bubbly like this one is right here. And you can just tap it down. And again, if you just kind of wiggle it in, it helps. And this line, I want it to butt right up to this one. So I'm just helping this line come in a little further. And same thing with over here, this line. Tap it into place. Okay, now I'm ready to flood it. And then I'm just wiggling my bag around, the bag tip in there, to kind of place it where I want to, to fix any little bumps or gaps that were there or air bubbles that I can pop using my bag. I can do that and then just wipe my bag off and store it for next time. Um, so I'm going to pick up the cookie again, and I do need to be careful that I don't shake too vigorously or pat too vigorously, not only because I can break the cookie, but at this point I have two other sections that are almost dry, 
And if I shake too much, I will get um, ridges that will form and the wet part of the icing underneath will kind of start to separate from the dry frosting on top and create little like marks in the top of the cookie that don't look very pretty. So I'm gonna go around and kind of fix the edges here. back and I want to make some polka dots on mine so I'm just going right in with my white icing and just gonna start to plunk out some dots I'm just staggering them. Don't always do the best job at polka dots. I'm sure you'll do a lot better than I do. So there's an, another chance to test your hand at the wet on wet technique again. Again, we want to lift it and just kind of give it a pat to let those dots settle into the pink frosting. Okay. They're looking pretty good. And then I'm going to do my final section here, white. So we're kind of going to outline, anchor. Every time I need to make a turn, I anchor. And then I pull up. And then I have to make a turn, I anchor. Create the line, drag it. and then I'm gonna fill in if your bag starts to get a little bit um, saggy right here like this you kind of want to tighten it up um, you can twist the top and that'll tighten up the bag a little bit for you and make it easier to just squeeze lightly rather than so forcefully if it was if the bag didn't have a lot of pressure already built up so we're going to go ahead and fill this in. Oops. I didn't get close enough to the cookie and so the icing just kind of ribboned everywhere. But accidents happen and we can fix it. Once I'm done flooding the cookie, I just go back and fix the gaps and the runoff a little bit right there, just kind of scrape it off. Um, you could use the flat part of your tool here too to like move things if you want to go pretty quickly. This would be a good tool to use to kind of move things around quick. The skewer tip works well too. Um, I'm not pressing it in so far because I do want this line of demarcation to be evident. 
So you can let that stay distinguished and it will look more realistic. So I'm gonna pick it up again, careful of the edges and shake and tap. But again, lightly, because we now have three other sections that are pretty much dry on the top, but underneath is still wet. So then I'm gonna pick up and fix the little bits that need to be fixed. The skewer definitely needs to be kept pretty wet because it's kind of tearing the icing as I go to correct things. So just keep yours wiped off with the wet paper towel and it'll be easier. Okay, we are ready to do the red heart on the inside here. Um, my red bag is pretty floppy, so I'm gonna just twist, twist. And that'll give me an easier way of squeezing without having to squeeze too hard. Okay, so I'll just do this a little bit carefully, but I do want it to be pretty full so it stands out. Under the perfect conditions, you would let each of these sections dry almost completely before you did the other one, at least giving it, you know, an hour in between. Um, doing these sections and then switching over to do those sections just because that line of demarcation will be so much more clear and uh, it'll be easier. You won't be as likely to make mistakes, but um, this is the time we have. So we're going forward. The heart as well. You would wait like an hour for those other parts to dry and then you could go back in and do it. But we don't have that time, so we're going to go ahead. And I'm staying close just because this is something that's already got borders and edges. So I'm just trying to fill in kind of closely to that. The other reason why we want to let this dry before we do the red heart is because this red is going to end up bleeding into the white envelope over time just because it's not solidly dry. So you won't notice it right away, but as the cookie sets out, you'll see that that red color kind of bleeds in to the white. So that's another reason for letting things set up. Okay. And um, it looks good, but I kind of want it a little bit more full. So I'm just gonna keep adding so it gets kind of popped up a little bit more. And then at the same time, I'm just gonna level it out with my piping bag as well. If you let this dry long enough, you could put like a little white kind of shiny mark on your heart up here too. 
Um, and we could do little kind of lacy borders for the top here, which we just need to let it dry just a little bit more. And then we can kind of put a little bit more detail onto the envelope. Because if we tried to do it now, it, it wouldn't look the best. So we'll go to our next cookie for now.